Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Alicia, your host, and today we are going to compare and contrast the teaching styles of Chopin and Liszt, who could best be described as frenemies. These two composers were active around the same time in the 1800s in the Romantic period, and they were both very revered, both very talented writers and piano players, but they couldn't be more different. Chopin was all about subtlety and sensitivity, whereas Liszt was all flair and bombast. I thought it would be fun to explore their teaching styles in today's video. We already know that their temperaments were very different and the way they wrote music was very different, but I wanted to explore their teaching philosophies just because as a teacher I find that interesting. And as a student it's also interesting because you can kind of think, well, do I agree with Chopin's point of view more or do I agree with Liszt's point of view more? And neither point of view is right or wrong, that's why we're doing this video. I have my own personal preference, but someone else might have a different preference and it's equally valid. A long time ago we did a versus video of two other composers, Hannon and Cherney. They wrote technical exercises for the piano and I kind of compared and contrasted them. So if you like this style of video, definitely check that out even though it is an old one. Anyway, let's get started. Let's start with a discussion on their lives as teachers. Chopin spent a good portion of his time as a piano teacher, almost 20 years, and it was one of his main occupations. He mainly taught wealthy aristocratic women and was known to charge a really high fee for his services. Although that's not to say he was really like, you know, penny pinching. He was known to also give out free lessons sometimes, just like Liszt. Now I'm not sure what Liszt charged for his lessons, but people would say that he was very generous with free lessons. The problem with Chopin teaching a bunch of aristocratic women is that he didn't end up with star pupils the way some other teachers might. These women couldn't really go anywhere as classical musicians. They would basically just be forced to play for fun, even if they were super talented. Liszt even noted this saying that Chopin was unfortunate with his pupils. Liszt also spent a lot of time teaching piano, and it was also one of his main occupations, so they were similar in that way. Liszt also taught a lot of ladies, and he had a preference when he was younger to teach attractive and maybe a little looser ladies, and he would kiss them for doing a good job because he was kind of a player. But as Liszt got older and matured a little bit, he was more of a paternal figure in the classroom. So what were their teaching schedules like? Well, Chopin was known to have a very flexible teaching schedule and would have lessons that were about an hour long a couple times a week. Although depending on the student and their talent, that would vary. Sometimes he would teach them more, sometimes less. Liszt would do more masterclass style lessons, so group lessons. Chopin was always all about the one-on-one, -on -one, but Liszt would do a collection of, say, five people and teach them for about an hour and a half to two hours long. His lessons usually began in the late afternoon, and students would come as often as every other day and enjoy the challenge of having to constantly perform in front of each other. His piano of choice was the brand Playel, and he had two in his teaching studio. He had a grand for his students and an upright for himself during lessons. Liszt preferred the piano brand Erard, which was a harder and heavier sounding piano. Since Chopin had no love of big public performances, he didn't gear his teaching towards performing. Instead, he focused more on teaching the artistic aspects of playing piano, and playing piano just for the sake of it. Liszt's lessons, on the other hand, were geared more towards the serious student who had a desire to be a concert pianist. And sometimes he would even surprise his students by having impromptu audience members at the lessons, unexpected musicians or friends who just happen to show up and suddenly you have uh, people who you've never met they have to play in front of. When it came to choosing students to teach, Chopin and Liszt were pretty similar in that they were both incredibly selective and refused to teach children or beginners. Liszt probably even more so. If you were, if you wanted to take piano lessons with Chopin, you'd basically have to like get through his friends and then have a few meetings and if you were lucky then he might take you on. Now Liszt even went so far as to refuse to teach piano technique. That was beneath his capabilities, basically. He considered that to be something you did at the conservatory to deal with before coming to him. So Liszt really only taught very advanced students. What kind of music did Chopin teach? 
He would always start lessons with some type of technical warm-up and then work on some etudes, such as Kramer's etudes, Clementi's Gratis Ab Parnassum, Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier. We had some Hummel pieces. Actually, Chopin considered Hummel to be the best preparation for his own pieces. And then, of course, John Field's Nocturnes, which were heavily inspirational to Chopin, and they were able to teach melodic and expressive playing. So after working through some etudes, Chopin would teach them classical and contemporary music by people like Handel, Beethoven, Weber, Scarlatti, Mendelssohn, etc. Notably absent from Chopin's list of teaching was music by Liszt and Schumann, two of his contemporaries. Uh, he apparently didn't like to teach them. Now, Liszt, we don't, I don't know, well, maybe someone else knows, let me know if you do, but Liszt for sure taught Beethoven and refused to teach specifically Chopin's Scherzo in B-flat minor since it was too popular and overplayed. Unlike Chopin, Liszt didn't spend time on etudes or technical exercises in his music lessons. So how long did these teachers and composers recommend their students practice for? Well, Chopin was famously against really long drawn out practice sessions. He took inspiration from Hummel and Hummel's philosophy was that playing more than three hours a day damps the spirits produces a mechanical rather than expressive and impassioned style of playing. Chopin subscribed to that belief. He would rather his students read books or go look at art and be present in the world instead of spending that time grinding it out at the piano. He determined that practicing any more than two to three hours a day would affect the student's ability to concentrate, and he considered the ability to concentrate at the piano to be the most important thing. If you didn't have concentration, you weren't gonna be practicing effectively anymore. This is where Liszt and Chopin differ hugely. Liszt was on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. He was known to work on piano exercises while reading books and advocated practicing for many, many hours a day. Chopin didn't believe in doing technique and technical exercises excessively. He basically believed that the point of technique was to free the hands to play the piano more expressively uh, as a means to an end instead of something to be developed for its own sake. Instead of trying to develop each finger to be equally strong, Chopin considered that to be a foolish thing to do. The way he figured, every finger is shaped differently and is always going to sound a bit different. So he liked to work with the natural human anatomy of the fingers instead of against it, trying to equalize the sound of all fingers. Whereas Liszt approached the piano hand as something that could be finely tuned like a machine. He spent a lot of hours developing his own immaculate technique this way, and no one can deny that Liszt had fantastic technique, but yes, his approach was much more mechanical. On the subject of fingering, Chopin was definitely a rule breaker. He broke away from the classical tradition of fingering to find an approach that worked the best for his students. He believed in doing what was easiest for the hand instead of what was traditional. And that was a pretty revolutionary approach at the time. Now Liszt didn't do a lot of detail work in his lessons. He didn't talk about things like fingering. For the most part, he would talk about concepts and abstract ideas, talking with metaphors and stories instead of specifics, giving a student like a broad concept to work on as opposed to like, you know, finger one should go here. An example of this is Liszt saying, do I care how fast you play your octaves? He once thundered. What I wish to hear is the canter of the horses of the Polish cavalry before they gather force and destroy the enemy. One thing that Chopin and Liszt always agreed on was that music must be played with feeling, and that was the most important thing. Emotion must be present in a performance. Neither Chopin or Liszt liked their students to imitate them or anybody else either. And Chopin maintained that he never played the same piece the same way twice. Chopin encouraged his students to study Italian opera in addition to piano in order to learn how to make melodies really sing at the piano and to use the piano as an imitation of the human voice in a way. Liszt also believed that emotive playing was the ultimate goal of the piano. He preferred to focus on that in lessons and discuss, as we talked about, concepts. And we get actually quite angry with students if they had poor technique, where he would say something like, leave your dirty linen at home where it belongs, something like that, suggesting that they go to a conservatory instead to develop their technique, because that just wasn't what he was there for. 
No discussion on Chopin's teaching is complete without a discussion on rubato or rubber band tempo. Where most people tend to get Chopin the most wrong is by playing his music with very exaggerated stops and starts. Well, Chopin himself was quite against that and always had a metronome on his piano. And that's not to say that he was super have to be on the beat all the time guy. He believed in elastic playing. He believed in a little bit of uh, bends and movements in his music. He was just really against the dramatic stops and starts. Liszt also didn't like to be chained to the beat, although he was definitely more into exaggeration than Chopin was. Both of them agreed though that, that music should always retain a pliable elastic quality and it should never feel rigid. Though Chopin might have been more detail oriented, Liszt spent his lessons looking at the big picture. About this, one of Liszt's students said, he doesn't keep nagging at you all the time, but he leaves you to your own conception. Now and then I'll make a criticism or play a passage and with a few words give you enough to think about all the rest of your life. There's a delicate point to everything he says, as subtle as he is himself. He doesn't tell you anything about the technique. That you must work out for yourself. Finally, let's talk about Liszt and Chopin's relationships with their students. Now Liszt had a pretty informal relationship with the students. They were basically like his friends. They would invite him out places, to parties, he would smoke and drink with them and hang out. Chopin on the other hand, while we don't necessarily know for sure how he interacted with his students, he was a very reserved person who preferred to put his emotion in his music and not in his interactions. So one could assume that lessons with Chopin would have been very professional, a little bit detached and not as like chummy. In general, students regarded Liszt as being warm and generous and open and Chopin was considered to be very gentle and kind. Now I hope we were able to get through this whole video without my personal bias coming through because I didn't want to slant your opinion by impressing my own on you. I don't even think I'm going to tell you which one I prefer. I'll let you guess if you think I'm more on the Chopin side or on the Liszt side. And I would like to know what you think too. What style of teaching suits you more? I was actually surprised when I was researching this because I thought they would have been so much more different. And there were a couple points in which they diverged a lot, but for the most part, I think they, they agreed on more, they disagreed, which comes back to the whole frenemies thing. Friends is a crucial component of being a frenemy, so they definitely had that. Anyway, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can come hang out on social. You can see those on the end cards when this video is over and I will catch you in the next video. No, is that right? So how, so what were, List would also,